We are Robert and Yuriki, and welcome to our video series about buying and renovating a house in southwest France. From snowy Helsinki, we share this week's episode where we bring you along on our house hunting journey and explain how we came to choose our house and the process involved. So the snow has arrived in Helsinki and it's rather wintry. Already uh, quite early this year, actually. Yeah. Already in mid-November we got the first snow and it stayed, as you see. Yeah. So very much the winter wonderland here. Yeah. Actually missing France now. Would like to be there without the snow and <laughs> still do some gardening. Absolutely. But we have our coffee keeping us warm and of course it's still very beautiful here and um, I just so. wish it was a bit more so <laughs> sunny, sunny though. I don't think the last heat wave is about to arrive. Yeah, I'm, if we wanted to open a little bit the process how we ended up to choose our house in France like what were the reasons why especially this house? Yeah, after looking online and, and deciding to go ahead with the process after that faithful day of, of scrolling online Jurki was one week later flying to France do you remember yeah we were quite impulsive with our decisions yeah. and you went alone I had work in Ireland at the time and I I couldn't go yeah I went to a small town of Duar and then when I arrived there it was very late and that little hotel was the only one actually in the town but it wasn't in the center so I was walking in the darkness quite a while and arrived there finally and there was no one at the hotel so I was knocking the doors and tried to watch through the windows and there was no one so I started to Message panic me. <laughs> yeah, panic, panic and panic and message uh, Robert in the middle of the nowhere and was kind of already in my mind preparing to sleep there outside somehow. Yeah, I think that was the first moment that we really said, oh my God, what are we doing? Like, this is just madness. Yeah, are we crazy or something? But you got in and then the following day the real estate agent was kind enough to pick you up from the hotel and bring you to the house. So I arrived finally at the house with the estate agent and the first impression was really good. So I, I really liked the village. It was beautiful. On the top of the hill, river meandering around. I felt that I had such a big responsibility to choose the house on my own without Robert being there and I tried to convince myself that I actually like this a lot yeah but I really wasn't sure do I like it at all yeah and of course I was living through the pictures online the videos the the estate agent had sent and and of course being so excited that you can easily make yourself like something or buy into a reality that that maybe in the long term is not the, the the right path you want to go down or but because you're excited and you've kind of made the leap into the process you you try and make yourself believe that everything is is perfect there was still lots of furniture and belongings of the owner still inside so it was also a bit difficult to see really the structures how they are um, some rooms were fine, some rooms not. Upstairs was like quite in a bad condition and felt like the the roof is coming in yeah. from here and there. And it turned out to be a shared attic space and a shared roof with a neighbour who who apparently had not been back to her property in, in quite some time. So even that would have fa we would have been faced with quite big challenges if something happened with the roof that whose 
responsibility is it? And I remember very well that I was waiting and waiting for the account of how the house was and did you like it and, and send me pictures and videos and, and everything. But you ended up going with the real estate agent to the local chateau to, to some wine tasting event and you drank wine all afternoon and never messaged me at all yeah, I was how quite everything busy. was. <laughs> I was quite busy with tasting the local wines so I thought that was the the first things to do first. On the priority thing, list, yeah. yeah. But then anyway, in Finland, after me returning back and Robert returning back from Ireland, we went through the pictures and were talking a lot and, and decided anyway to put a bid in. Um, but unfortunately, in that time, then somebody bid against us and we, we lost that property. But we didn't give up and we kept searching houses from that area. Yeah, and then came up the next property. Yeah, that was that was a big house, a lovely one, lots of possibilities mm. with that. We were thinking to turn it into some sort of a, like a artist in residency place or whatever. There was so many rooms and uh, four floors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a huge property. But so much work. Yeah. It really needed so, so much. And it, this was maybe where the pictures deceived what you were seeing in, in reality. And of course, some many of the rooms were, were very beautiful, but they didn't show the huge holes in the ceiling that had uh, many of the ceilings had collapsed. And it was yeah. just really quite a, a huge. Um, project to take on. So we came back and kept searching again and um, then we ended up seeing online this house of ours that we actually had seen many times but for some reason we just Scrolled didn't pay past attention it, yeah. to it. I don't know why actually why that happened. Yeah. Then we started to check it closer and we actually liked it a lot. Yeah, and we and checked we, the location. Yeah, we realized the location. I think maybe we had seen it really at the very start of the search. So, and these place names mean kind of nothing because you just didn't know the air. But now we had been twice there and researching a lot. And now we realized, oh, this is in exactly the area we want. So we got so excited of that property that we called the... Um, estate agent right away and asked more and decided to place the bid right away because we learned during this process that you can actually do that in France you can give the offer right in the beginning because for example in Finland if you leave the offer it means that you are obliged to take it the other thing in France is multiple real estate agent companies can sell your property so there can be mu multiple viewings going on at the same time and they don't of course correspond with each other so they another company could have a bid in and you could be viewing the house and have flown all the way there and not even know that process is, is going on so we wanted to be very safe when when we flew out to see the property that if we liked it that we we had it the estate agent then of course um asked the, the family who was selling it like if they all agree and it was a big group of people so we needed to wait quite a while we placed the offer uh in the beginning of june and then only in the beginning of september everybody had replied and agreed it was a long, long wait. And then, of course, we flew right away to France because until that moment, we didn't even see the house in live. Yeah. We just saw the pictures online and our estate agent was absolutely fantastic. Like, yeah. she was so helpful and she sent us lots of videos and called us and told lots of details about the house yeah and try to keep our nerves calm and of course still we knew we had this 
10 day cooling off period because until you sign the first contract which is called the Compromis du Vente, only from then you have the 10 days. So even though we had this big long wave, we knew that when we would go and see it and we would sign, we still could then pull out of the process if, if it just wasn't what, what we wanted at all. Um, and thankfully we, we really liked it. Yeah, we just signed and then the, the process went from there. The process then takes <laughs> even another couple of months because once you sign, then you have the 10 day cooling off period and then it goes to the notaire or solicitor and they work for three to four months on gathering all of these surveys, information, background checks and getting all the, the financial um, situations in order. And then after that three to four months, you go and sign with all of the owners. So for us, it was all the siblings who had inherited the house and you sit and you go through a huge amount of documentation and then you sign and then we got the, the keys, which was for us in January. January. Yeah, the waiting was so difficult, at least for me, because I'm not very patient, patient at all. Now to wait from the beginning of June till the beginning of January was sometimes a bit too much for me and uh, I have to say that I even threw a yogurt cup on the wall one morning because I was just <laughs> in rage. I think if we can offer any insight into the process that is one thing to take into consideration is just the timing of, of everything even if it's a very smooth sale with the the owners of the property you still have to wait this three to four months for the solicitor or notaire to get all of the 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 documentation in order you have to send them the money before the 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 final signing date and so all of this has to be done so it's certainly not you cannot move buy the house and move in in a week it's it's it is just a longer process so it has to be taken into account. So once the challenge of buying the house was over, the next challenge started, which was the huge renovation which was facing us. I remember feeling that once we had gotten the key from the, the solicitor or the notaire, we drove back and we were now alone. There was no real estate agent with us to to hold our hand um, through everything and we were on our own and opening the door and saying oh my god this is really now a reality and we we just have to start and where do we start and as it was january it was quite cold in the house and especially the evenings were so freezing we had a couple of radiators that we plugged in but because the electricity wasn't renewed yet, it didn't allow us to plug in more than two, two devices at once or the fuse would trip on the fuse board and we would be having to go and deal with the spiders and all those things we don't really like in the, in the dark. So we decided to rip off the wallpapers as we thought that that's the only thing we can do with our skills at that moment. Yeah, and it was really a kind of maybe bittersweet is not the, the, the right word, but maybe just a double-sided emotion of, of being so happy, but being extremely scared of, of almost even touching the building for having no experience in, in really what we were doing. After ripping off the wallpapers, we ended up um, planting the tulip bulbs outside. <laughs> so as we got the key and did some first things, first things in the, no, I just gonna say that. <laughs> so we got our key to the house. We spent some days there doing some important renovations, such as taking down the wallpaper. Um, it was time to come back to Finland and make a proper list and renovation plan. 
countless hours of watching YouTube every morning during the breakfast and writing down the budgets and to-do lists and waiting for to get back to France in the next month. But unfortunately, the COVID hit and the borders were closed and we couldn't get back. And again, horribly long waiting. Yeah. And that was so hard. <laughs> but at least we knew we have the key, the house is ours. Yeah. We didn't need to be scared that somebody else will buy that. And then finally in June, we managed to get the permission to fly back to France and to continue or, start. <laughs> or actually start <laughs> the, the renovation. renovation. And we'll show more about that process in the next video. But for now, we're freezing. As you might have picked up, we like the warmer weather. So we will go and refill the coffee cup and see you in the next episode.